Today we're speaking with Richard Sherman about supply chain and, and technology trends for 2017. Uh, Richard, can you uh, first provide a brief background of yourself? Well, sure, Dustin. It's 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 always first of all, it's always a pleasure to speak with you, um, and uh, you know I think you're bringing some very valuable information to the supply chain community. Um, I'm, you know, I've been around for about 35 years, uh, uh, largely in supply chain technology and helping companies uh, apply technology to uh, improve their operations and their per overall performance. Uh, I'm currently a senior fellow uh, in the Tata Consultancy Services Global Supply Chain Practice and Center of Excellence. Uh, so uh, I work with uh, uh, our principals and our different business units at uh, uh, best practices research and technology trends and and uh, you know kind of what 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 what's going on uh, in the in the business that can impact our clients and how can we develop uh, services around uh, helping our clients meet those challenges. Well, what cha what changes or trends do you see happening in 2017? Well, that's that's a great question. Um, you know, everybody likes to look at the crystal ball, but uh, we we certainly have a kind of a base of change uh, which has been occurring over the last few years. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, today everyone realizes that uh, e-commerce is here to stay. I think that people realize the internet uh, is clearly uh, becoming more pervasive. Uh, the computing power uh, is becoming more and more affordable and uh, uh, available basis cloud deployments. So companies are very rapidly deploying uh, new uh, technology and solutions in a kind of a hybrid cloud environment where they're using a combination of new cloud-based applications to extend uh, and enhance their, their on-premise and, and traditional proprietary uh, uh, positions. Um, so clearly we've got the Internet of Things, uh, more and more sensors, monitors, uh, devices that are collecting data across the supply chain in, in real time. Uh, and, uh, of course, from a social perspective, you've got the social media uh, where more and more people are connected to the Internet you know, almost 24 by 7. Uh, I, I think I saw a research report not too long ago that said that something like uh, 85 to 90 percent of all adults uh, have their smartphone uh, within reach uh, 24 by 7. So increasingly connected, uh, which is, you know, presenting a lot of challenges uh, in the supply chain. How do we, you know, compete uh, with bricks and mortars in, in an e-commerce world? So omni-channel uh, fulfillment and omni-channel marketing are bec becoming very, very important uh, because we, we really can't, transmit everything electronically so we've got last mile delivery issues uh, we've got volume and scale issues uh, all of that data out there uh, is becoming uh, a risk uh, so security and cybersecurity is uh, uh, extremely critical and, and certainly uh, uh, here in, in the US uh, you know the prime example of that is the you know the hacking uh, that went on during the, the uh, uh, election however uh, at that same time uh, we, we've got to look at all of this data that's becoming available that helped us predict uh, consumer behavior so more and more data is being collected about you personally than ever has been before and so with that there, there are issues uh, beginning to emerge around privacy uh, and data ownership. Um, you know, companies are monetizing and benefiting uh, from having all of this personal data about you. Um, shouldn't they share in that revenue? So uh, personal data may come at a cost in the future. So uh, we'll probably see some legislation uh, around security, privacy, and data ownership coming up. Uh, there's a lot of conversation and a lot of testing going on relative to autonomous vehicles. Uh, and so the driverless uh, commercial vehicles, uh, the autonomous personal vehicles uh, change, for example, the entire automotive ecosystem. So it's, it's not just uh, the transportation equation that changes, it's car ownership that changes. Uh, it's Uber-like uh, commercialized ride sharing. 
Um, there are all types of changes to the ecosystem, insurance changes, um, revenue for municipalities change. So the entire ecosystem changes, and, and, and the learning from that is that companies can no longer just look at their customer suppliers for what's happening in their marketplace. They have to look at the entire ecosystem uh, and see what kind of repercussions uh, that these different changes can have to their overall market ecosystem that they play in. Uh, so I, I think we're seeing a lot of changes. Robotics are, are here and, and growing in popularity. Uh, with all of that data, uh, obviously companies uh, have to engage in more sophisticated analytics for demand uh, forecasting, demand shaping, uh, demand response. Uh, and with all of those analytics, there is a maturity cycle. And companies have to be aware of the fact that a lot of the more sophisticated analytics, such as predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics, uh, it takes time to build a history of behavior upon which those predictive uh, and prescriptive analytic systems can be built. So companies can fall behind very, very rapidly. So, you know, my advice uh, to companies uh, going into two seven, uh, 2017 is that you really have to take a look at, number one, what's happening within your market ecosystem and what potential changes can have a disruptive effect. Uh, I think companies have to anticipate disruptive change uh, to their market e ecosystems with all of this change as we evolve into an as-a-service uh, type of an economy uh, and more of a sharing economy. Uh, democratized commerce follows connected commerce. And so that has a lot of changes to how companies buy and sell products. So uh, it's going to be critical that companies create a vision for their future, that they lay out a digital strategy, uh, and they develop a roadmap for how they are going to architect their enterprise in this future uh, digital age. And uh, thank you, Rich, for sharing today. Hey, thank you, Dustin. Always, always a pleasure to speaking with you.